Hi, my name is Greg Koopman. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to apply transaction rollback uh, for your database, your SQL Server database, using Tal o Talon Open Studio. Okay, so what we're going to do is start with this package, this job rather, that you see in front of you. And what we have is it's a basic job uh, where we truncate a student table, we truncate a teacher table, then we reload from a delimited file um, back into that teacher's file and back into the student's file here. Okay, so so here's a teacher's file which has Leonardo da Vinci, Mick Jagger, and Albert Einstein. Okay, and these um, have the, the teacher code, first name, last name, city, and how many years of experience they got. Okay, and then in my other file, I have a student list. And in that file, I have these very similar uh, attributes, uh, except for this is a year, uh, birth year, okay, on the left side. Also an integer, take note of that. Okay, so right now, in I ha also in my SQL Server, I have uh, two tables built that um, have the same structure as the delimited files. And um, when I run them, where I do a select asterisk against both of them, as you see, there's no data. Okay, so let's go ahead and run my, my job. And this job should populate those two tables from the delimited files I presented to you just a moment ago. So I'm gonna run the job here. It runs, and as you see, three rows were pushed into the teacher's table, five rows were pushed into the student's table. Let's go over and see if it worked. I'm going to run my query here, execute, and sure enough, they all came in fine. Okay, so now let's say, for example, this process, these students and teachers are all made up of a big ETL job and that everything, they're the first things that are populated uh, every week this job runs and you know and basically whenever someone uh, they might add new people to the teachers list delimited file or new people to the students list okay very simple so let's say then that they go ahead and add some new ones new people to the students list so as you see I've added five more students to the students list in this file okay but let's say that one of these students has a um, has uh, we are for their birth date for example Janice Chaplin we had an A in front or an exclamation mark instead of a numeric uh, digit and that's going to cause this this an error when this goes to push this into the students table. So let's see what happens then. So now I'm going to run it again. And I get the error. Now, what we might have the person who made that error might let's say you don't have 5 more new rows. Let's say you have 50,000 new rows. And the person who created that table and the people that check it, they're not around. And this process has to run every day. Okay. So what you basically have, if we go back now and we look at the, it did error out. Um, but let's just see what happened there and see what, our, what state our tables are in. So I'm going to rerun. Our, rerun. And what you see here is that, yes, the teacher's table, although it was truncated and it was re imported re-extracted it can't it looks fine but the b bottom table which is a student's table is totally blank because of that error because it that error did not allow those rows to enter in so now we have an inconsistency between these two tables what we really want is if any error happens we want to keep the table as is nicely populated okay even though it might not be the latest and greatest we still want, you know, we still want it to be, you know, populated with everything we had the day before, right? So 
when if an error happens, we want to roll back ev all the changes, including the truncate. We don't want it to truncate at that point. So if it's halfway done and half of the table, you know, one table is truncated, the other table is not, we don't want that. We want to just have it the way it was at the beginning if an error happens, okay? And that's called a rollback in database terms. Um, now, okay, so let's see how we're how that would work. I'm going to go ahead and put the, the tables back into a consistent state. Okay, I put them, the tables back into a consistent state as you see here. So they have all these different records in it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is we ran it before when an error happened and it, it was only half baked. It didn't, it, part of the transaction worked, part of it didn't. It didn't roll anything back. It was it was problematic. So what we want to do now is show you what I want to show you is what I want to show you is how do you control this package to do that? So I want to be able to when the package, like I said, is half is breaks in the middle. I don't want it to be broken in the middle. I want it to be rolled back to the way it was before we even started this thing. Okay. So the what the problem is this? The problem is here. In your DB connection, and this can be good, it could be bad. It depends on how you want to configure your job. But in our, this scenario, what we have here is the connection, and under advanced properties of that SQL Server connection, we have something called auto commit checked. Okay, so what that does is that as soon as something a transaction completes successfully, it's going to it's committed and it's in there, just like with the teachers. Uh, uh, rows were committed all right um, and so were the truncates of the teacher table and the student table they were committed a after that and once they we got over to this part where the students failed well that was that was it it didn't um, it didn't commit because it broke in the middle of the transaction so it, it it's it did its own internal rollback but it didn't roll back the whole thing so that's what auto commit does by turning auto commit off and, it, and adding an extra commit at the very end of your main your main pipeline called TMS SQL commit. Okay, so what we got to do? Oops, I can spell right. That'd be okay. So here's the MS SQL commit. So by putting that at the end and turning auto refresh off up at the open of our connection. Okay, put the trigger on wrote okay okay and put it under commit and in the commit all we're going to do is go ahead and <coughs> set our date our component list to the connection above okay and that's what's going to um, roll it back okay so now I come back over to my run but before that I have to actually go back to, to my file and put in something that's going to break it, which is to add a new row. And I'm going to call this one, okay, Florida. And we're going to call this Jake Moran. And we're going to give him a M. Oh, 41 okay but we're going to misspell the date of birth put by putting an a and now I'm going to save it so what we really want when it when it fails we still want to get our stuff back even though we truncated the beginning of this thing of this uh, package we want it to roll completely back the truncates and the inserts and everything to where it was prior to this state which is like this so there'd be 10 records still so let's go ahead so now when I go back to this package we have turned off the advanced settings here yeah we have turned off the advanced settings were for auto commit and instead we put the commit at the end so if it fails prior to that it's gonna the job's gonna die and we're going to um, get an error message and then it's going it's never going to hit the commit so since this is an auto commit none of these things will be committed and the connection will close and you and, and you'll be back exactly the way we were Okay, so let's run this. Basic run, run. Okay, the error is generated. It sends us the email up here. 
and what we'll see okay and the job's over so now we go back to SQL Server and the question is are we going to be an inconsistent state well the error message says couldn't parse the birth year so we know that happened over there in the um, student listing okay just like we you know made it happen <clears throat> so now the question is are we going to be half baked again like we were before when we had the auto commit on and the, what we wanted to do is come back exactly the way before uh, the error came up so we're going to execute this and lo and behold we have all the records exactly the same way we don't have the 11th record because that was errored but that's this is all there because um, nothing it was never committed uh, so we this is exactly the way it was before we started the transaction before we started the job there is one thing I want to emphasize is basically th there is no rollback per se there's not a rollback component there's no rollback um, settings that I see anywhere in the job the whole point of what I'm saying by rollback is basically it does not commit so if you look here on the DB commit the main thing is that if all of this if this is set to auto um, commit if it's not set to if it is not set to auto commit on this connection as it is here it's not set this will not commit unless it reaches this component okay now this component this sub job because it fails here right and this this whole sub job fails this component fails it never reaches this commit okay so when I run this it, it, it does what we expect it to do um, if I change the on component and I change it to something like row main right this could very well get to DB commit and cause a problem we were we were having at the beginning of this whole thing with the auto commit set to check checked on so let's run this so we're still gonna have an error the question is whether there's an error but let's go to look at the sequel it committed the truncate table students and since it reached the commit component there will be no rows in the student table it ended up getting to the commit so it committed whatever was in the whole job and that's why we're in an inconsistent state here so when you set up your job when you set up your job in the commit you have to look at your logic and make sure that if a fail somewhere in your main pipeline that that it doesn't allow it to get to the DB commit okay so in this case there's no reason why rows should be going to commit anyways right so that's just something that could cause you some pain and problems so what we do here is just say trigger on component OK or on sub job OK from here you can do that also and that way you won't get that um, you won't get the, the it won't it will never make it to, to, the, to the commit and therefore your it will roll it'll basically have emulate a rollback because the basically all the changes that happened during the prior to the commit it's as if they never happened because they never got committed okay I hope that wasn't too confusing but um, if you follow transactions that kind of thing you should be able to you know understand this uh, if not keep rewatching the video um, but basically just in again to summarize the auto refresh um, is the, uh, the commit auto refresh property in the connection can be a really good friend or can be a really good bad friend so sometimes you'll want to use it sometimes you won't in this scenario you don't want to use it you want to do the commit at the end that way if any error ha occurs inside of the pipeline it just rolls it back to to its stable position like it was prior to running the job in the first place Thank you and I hope you enjoyed this video.